This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at some insights from a paper called as Frugal GPT. So the idea over here is how can you use large language models while reducing cost and improving performance. The key thing over here is that currently you can make use of a growing number of large language models like GPT-4, Chat GPT, J1 Jumbo. Right? There are a lot of popular uh, large language model APIs. But there is a cost associated with querying these APIs. Right? And each of them has a different pricing structure. And these fees can differ by orders of magnitude. So how can you actually use large language models on large collection of queries and text in such a way that you can optimize the cost associated with inference? Okay, so the inference could be question answering, right? Various kind of inference tasks. So in this paper, they have come up with three strategies. One is called as prompt adaptation. Second one is large language model approximation. And third one is large language model cascade. Okay, so in uh, Frugal GPT, they are, uh, you know, uh, proposing a flexible instantiation of this cascade method which learns which combinations of large language models to use for different queries in order to reduce cost and improve accuracy. Okay. So that is the idea over here. Right. So what they are saying is that LLMs such as GPT-4, it has unprecedented performance. But if somebody has to use chat GPT, okay, uh, the cost estimated cost uh, to operate per day is close to around 700 K dollars. Okay. Uh, if you are using GPT-4 to support customer service for a small business, it can cost over 2100, uh, 21,000 or, uh, you know, uh, dollars a month. Right. So there is this financial cost. There is also uh, your environmental and energy impact. Right. So what is the cost associated with this large language models typically, right? It consists of three components. One is prompt cost proportional to the length of the prompt. Two is generation cost proportional to the generational length and sometimes a fixed cost per query. Okay. So this is the cost associated with, uh, you know, these large language models. And actually they've compared over here, the cost associated with these different uh, language models, large language models from different providers over here. Okay. Uh, so there is this different costs over here. And if you look at some of the costs, right? i uh, say if you want to do using chat GPT, it is uh, $2 say for 10 million input tokens, right? Uh, and for 10 million output tokens, it is $20, right? Uh, for GPT-4, it is 30. If you are looking at GPT-J, it is 0.2. So if you look at the magnitude of cost involved between these, right, uh, it is huge. The difference is huge. So how can you optimize this? What they are trying to tell over here. All right. Um, so they are talking about three strategies over here. One is called as prompt adaptation. Okay. So what happens in prompt adaptation is uh, you have prompt selection and query concatenation. So in prompt selection, what happens is that uh, in your prompt, if you have multiple examples over here, like question, uh, uh, you know, question one plus answer one, question two plus answer two, question three plus answer three, question four plus answer four, and then you have your question and answer, uh, then you are expecting the answer. So in prompt selection, what happens is that you only select some examples in your prompt, not all the examples. So here in this case, you are only selecting question two and uh, question four over here. So this reduces your input prompt size. Okay. So you are reducing the number of examples in your prompt and thereby you are getting lower cost. The challenge is which examples to select in your input prompt. Okay. So the second case is query concatenation. The idea over here is that if you have multiple queries, okay. Uh, so you uh, modify your, your prompt in such a way that, you know, your prompt is here. You have multiple questions, right? And answers four questions and four answers in your prompt. So what you do is that you modify your prompt such that you are combining question one and question two, providing answer one and answer two, 
right combining question 3 and question 4 uh, you know providing answer 3 uh, and answer 4 you are combining them in such a way that it is kind of again reducing cost so this is query uh, concatenation okay uh, so you can uh, remove redundant prompt processing right and you are actually uh, you know asking uh, the llm api uh, by uh, sending the prompt only once to the llm while allowing it to address multiple queries so that is the idea over here so to handle two queries using one prompt the examples presented in the prompt can include both queries followed by their corresponding answer so you are sending multiple queries to be processed by the llm api at once okay the third uh, uh, this, this is prompt adaptation right so this is the prompt adaptation strategy the next strategy is llm approximation this is quite simple the idea over here is that you use the api to actually uh, you know answer the queries but you store the answers in a cache along with the prompt so when a new input comes you compare it with the prompt and if the prompt uh, it's very close to already existing prompt you pull out that answer so this is very straightforward completion cache okay uh, so this is part of your llm approximation okay another llm approximation is model fine tuning where you use a uh, expensive model to first get the responses and then you fine tune a smaller model on those responses to improve okay that is straightforward model fine tuning so this is the second strategy the third strategy is llm cascade so the idea is that you have multiple llm apis each with a different cost okay so what you can do is that you can send a query to a list of llm api sequentially and then you measure whether the response which comes out of this um, you know llm um, uh, uh, what you call a set of llms in a chain okay you measure uh, you first send your input to one uh, the first uh, llm and you get the response and you see whether it meets a particular threshold if it meets the particular threshold then you are not going to send it to further llms in this chain so what will happen is that for majority of the queries you might use one or two llms over here only for very complex ones you might use the complex model right so what happens is that you can organize your uh, uh, cascade in increasing order of cost okay or some other strategy over here such that the overall cost is minimized so that is the idea of llm cascade okay it sends a query to list of llm api sequentially if one llm api's response is reliable then its response is returned no further llms in the list are needed okay so the remaining llm apis are queried only if the previous apis generations are deemed insufficiently reliable query cost is significantly reduced if the first few apis are relatively inexpensive and produce reliable generations so this is the llm cascade strategy quite interesting okay so the idea is that given a budget and you have different llms available to you what is the strategy to actually come up with the uh, cost optimization right so that is what this cascade llm does over here right basically you are learning this strategy of you know given this prompt what is the best way to get the answer so how uh, how can we do this for this you need sufficient examples okay it's kind of supervised learning because you need sufficient inputs and outputs uh, then you can actually learn which model is reliable for which kind of inputs and based on that you can come up this with the strategy of a reliability score for each of these large language models and then you can uh, come up with a strategy of okay if this model works out you know very good for some kind of prompts then we don't use other models over here okay if this answer is uh, poor then we send it to the next model gpt3 over here if that is also poor then we send it to gpt4 okay so that is the idea over here okay so that's what they have explained over here um, you know uh, this uh, case setup and how they are doing it so they are doing it uh, on a benchmark called as headlines data set right and uh, some other um, benchmarks also over here uh so they are doing it on this headlines data set they are doing it on over ruling data set and co qa data set and these are the domains headlines is from finance this is from law and uh, co qa is from passage reading and these are the size of the uh, data set and these are some of the examples in the prompt for each of these data set okay right uh so this is the learned frugal uh, gpt strategy on the headlines data set so if gpt j doesn't give good results 
um, then it goes uh, to JL1 and then it goes to GPT-4. Okay, uh, that's the idea over here. The cascade strategy learned on this data set with overall budget, uh, this thing is one fifth of GPT-4's cost, just with a budget of $6.5. So frug uh, frugal GPT avoids querying GPT-4 as long as GPT-J and JL1 produces high quality answers. Sometimes GPT-4 makes a mistake, but frugal GPT learns to use the correct answers by JL, uh, JL, uh, J1 and GPT-J. Overall, uh, they observe that, uh, you know, uh, frugal GPT reduces the cost by 80%. It also improves the accuracy by 1.5% compared to GPT-4. So frugal GPT using this strategy, okay, of, you know, uh, only sending the uh, prompts to GPT-4 if GPT-J and JL-1 answers are not reliable. This, you know, saves cost by 80%. It also improves the accuracy while compared to GPT-4 alone by 1.5%. Okay, so that is what they have proven over here, right? So how is this possible? This is possible because, uh, you know, LLM APIs produce uh, better performance than the best individual LLM. Why can, why are multiple LLM APIs capable to do this? Because uh, this is due to generation diversity. Even an inexpensive LLM can sometimes correctly answer queries on which a more L, uh, expensive LLM fails. So sometimes G, uh, GPT-J gives better answers than GPT-4, okay? So it is because of the diversity of generations of response from these different LLM APIs. That is what they say over here. Uh, this talks about the cost saving. So GPT, uh, frugal GPT can reduce cost while maintaining accuracy. Uh, so the overall cost savings of frugal GPT ranges from 50 to 98% on these different data sets. Okay, um, so on COQA it is 59, uh, it is 73.3% on overruling data set and 98.3% on headlines data set, right? And uh, this is the best individual LLM cost to reach the best individual LLM and this is the frugal GPT cost in terms of dollars. Okay, so powerful but expensive GPT-4 are utilized only for challenging queries and for the other queries you make use of low cost. Uh, LLM APIs. Okay, so there is some interesting performance and cost trade-offs. Um, so they have shown that over here. So the idea over here in the first case is that uh, you know, in this case, if you look at uh, what happens in uh, the headlines data set, is that they have explained it over here. Uh, GPT-4 makes mistakes on some queries, right? But some low cost APIs produce better answers over here. So GPT-4 gave the wrong answer over here, right? But GPT-J gave a good answer over here, right? So this is in this particular headlines uh, data set, right? So again, if you look at one more case over here, GPT-J and JL1 gives better answers than GPT-4 alone, okay? Right? But there are some uh, cases where you know, GPT-J and JL1 is not reliable. So the query has to be sent to GPT-4 and the answer is given over here. Okay. So that is what they show over here. Uh, if you look at the second figure, what they say is that, uh, you know, GPT-J incorrectly reference no rule uh, uh, in the legal statement. The time has to come to regularize in this case. However, frugal GPT accepts JPTJ's correct answer, avoiding the use of expensive LLMs. So in the second case also, they are talking about that. Uh, GPT-4 gives the wrong answer, whereas uh, GPTJ gives a better answer over here. Right? GPT-4 alone gives a long answer. That's what they are saying over here. Okay. So in the third uh, data set, so this is the first one is in your headlines data set. This is in your overruling data set. And in the third data set, if you were to look at what they are saying over here is that, mm, let me come to that. Uh, in case of 5C, uh, again, GPT-4 provides the room. Frugal GPT is not perfect. Ample room for cost reduction. Okay, so it is quite possible that uh, in this case, if you look at this particular case over here in 5C, a GPT-3 actually has given the correct answer, right? But the answer seems to be unreliable in terms of score. So in this case, 
uh, J1 also has given the correct answer, but still goes to GPT-4. Okay, but that is the correct answer. Right. So there is some kind of cost optimization possible over here as well. Right. There could be cases where the uh, first model itself has given in a cascade chain has given the proper answer, but the score is unreliable over here. So this is a challenge. Okay. So that is what they have explained over here. Now coming to limitations over here uh, to train the LLM cascade strategy in frugal GPT, they need labeled examples. Again, the labeled examples should be from the similar distribution as test examples. This is some kind of supervised learning and that limitation applies over here. And learning the LLM cascade itself will require resources, but this is an one time upfront cost. Okay, this is beneficial when the final query data set is much more larger than the data used to train the cascade provided two important assumptions. They should be from the same distribution. Okay. As you are uh, training data. Okay. So there are other strategies to improve uh, your LLM computation, like attention computation itself, but they have not discussed over here. So what they're saying is that they have concentrated on balancing performance and cost, and they have provided a foundation strategy over here but they only looked at performance and cost. Okay. But for real world applications, you may need to look at other critical factors, including latency, fairness, privacy, and environmental impact. So these also need to be included in other optimization methodologies while maintaining performance and cost effectiveness. So this is some future research. Okay. And there is also in risk critical applications like healthcare and all, we need to be very careful of the uncertainty. So you need careful quantification of that in the LLM generated outputs. Okay. But I like this idea of given a budget, how can you come up with this optimal cascade of models? Okay. And how can you actually reduce cost while maintaining accuracy? So this paper is quite important and the strategy present here, um, uh, what do you call, which they have uh, mentioned over here. I like this idea and I think this is quite practical as well. So for the people who are into engineering where they have to choose multiple large language models, uh, they could try out this strategy for a particular budget and you know, for a particular accuracy, they can try out this strategy. So I like this paper a lot. I hope uh, you like this video on frugal GPT. I will be putting the link to this paper. You can read through this paper. Um, See you in another video.